three biblical habits that will drastically change your life. In these times, the great virtues of the Bible are currently being abandoned for the popular culture of deceit, lies, wrong decisions, and unrighteousness. Even if some have chosen to remove the Bible from their circles, it doesn't take away from the dignity, confidence, and peace that comes along with a life that is lived on the right path. Here are some of those excellent virtues to develop and make a part of your daily life. Number 1. Biblical Wisdom Godly wisdom may appear to be quite different from worldly wisdom. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus emphasized these distinctions. Godly wisdom frequently requires us to do the opposite of our natural inclinations. For example, he said, You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. Godly wisdom contradicts the conventional wisdom of the day. It is not concerned with self-preservation, but with furthering God's kingdom. Only by committing to crucifying our flesh and living in the Spirit can we live in godly wisdom. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16 Making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Learning God's word is the primary way we gain godly wisdom. Psalm 119, verse 169 The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Psalm 119, verse 130 Nobody is born wise. We must get wisdom from God in order to be truly wise. Psalm 119, verses 98 to 100 You through your commandments make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep your precepts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 Immersion in God's word produces a heart full of praise and thanksgiving. That place of worship becomes fertile ground for the growth of wisdom seeds. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Jesus prayed to the Father. John chapter 17, verse 17. He desires that his followers stand apart from the world by making godly decisions and living godly lives. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15. We can only do so if his word lives within us. We can also develop godly wisdom by carefully picking those who travel through life with us. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 Paul advised the Corinthians to imitate me as I imitate Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 16 and chapter 11 verse 1 those who seek godly wisdom will choose those who demonstrate wisdom in their personal lives as heroes. Scripture tells us to ask for godly wisdom. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. James chapter 1 verse 5 God desires that we have his wisdom. He is delighted to give it to us when our hearts are ready. However, James proclaims, But he must ask in faith without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, 
being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. God is aware of the state of our hearts, and he pours out his wisdom on us when we commit to trusting him and obeying his word. However, if we want to keep the right to disobey, we are conflicted and may not receive the wisdom we seek. Solomon received godly wisdom when he asked the Lord for it. 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verses 10 and 11 Now give me wisdom and knowledge, that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this great people of yours? Then God said to Solomon, Because this was in your heart, and you have not asked riches or wealth or honor, or the life of your enemies, nor have you asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. He became known for his great wisdom, yet he turned away from following the wisdom he'd been given later in his later years. He disobeyed the Lord and even began to worship idols. 1 Kings chapter 11 verses 1 to 11 But King Solomon loved many foreign women, as well as the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites, from the nations of whom the Lord had said to the children of Israel, You shall not intermarry with them, nor they with you. Surely they will turn away your hearts after their gods. Solomon clung to these in love, and he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it was so when Solomon was old, that his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not fully follow the Lord as did his father David. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, on the hill that is east of Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the people of Ammon. And he did likewise for all his foreign wives who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. So the Lord became angry with Solomon, because his heart had turned from the Lord God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he did not keep what the Lord had commanded. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, Because you have done this, and have not kept my commandment and my statutes which I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom away from you and give it to your servant. Receiving wisdom did not guarantee that Solomon would take the wise path, Regrettably, he traded his godly wisdom for worldly wisdom and suffered as a result. The rest of 1 Kings chapter 11 describes Solomon's fall as the Lord removed his blessing from a once great man. There is unusual respect that always goes to those that live wisely. Proverbs chapter 1 teaches us a profound lesson about wisdom. It says, To know skillful and godly wisdom and instruction, to discern and comprehend the words of understanding and insight, to receive instruction in wise manner, and the discipline of wise thoughtfulness, righteousness, justice, and integrity. That prudence, good judgment, astute common sense, may be given to the naive or inexperienced who are easily misled, and knowledge and discretion intelligent discernment to the youth. The wise will hear and increase their learning, and the person of understanding will acquire wise counsel and the skill to steer his course wisely and to lead others to the truth. To understand a proverb and a figure of speech, or an enigma with its interpretation, and the words of the wise and their riddles that require reflection, the reverent fear of the Lord, that is, 
worshipping him, and regarding him as truly awesome, is the beginning and the preeminent part of knowledge, its starting point and its essence. But arrogant fools despise skillful and godly wisdom and instruction and self-discipline. My son, hear the instruction of your father, and do not reject the teaching of your mother, for they are a garland of grace on your head, and chains and ornaments of gold around your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, Come with us, let us lie in wait to shed blood. Let us ambush the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like Sheol, the place of the dead, even whole as those who go down to the pit of death. We will find and take all kinds of precious possessions. We will fill our houses with spoil. Throw in your lot with us, they insist. We will all have one money bag in common. My son, do not walk on the road with them. Keep your foot far away from their path, for their feet run to evil, and they hurry to shed blood. The ways of God are the ways of wisdom, and apart from bringing respect, it also brings a peace that no man can bestow on another. Number 2. Maintaining a life of integrity. A man or woman of integrity that hates deceit, hypocrisy, and lies will always earn the respect of the people around. Job chapter 1 verse 1 includes the statement that Job was blameless and upright. This cannot mean that Job was sinless. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. So what does it mean? Romans chapter 3 verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Hebrew word for blameless is tam, which can also be translated as perfect or upright. The same word appears in Proverbs chapter 29 verse 10 which says, The bloodthirsty hate a person of integrity and seek to kill the upright. A blameless person is someone whose life exhibits integrity. The word upright in Job chapter 1 is a translation of the Hebrew yashar, which means right or just. This word appears in this verse alongside blameless. The same word appears in parallel with those who seek peace in Psalm chapter 37 verse 37. Consider the blameless, observe the upright. A future awaits those who seek peace. The fuller context in Job chapter 1 verse 1 is, this man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. As a result, Job's description as blameless and upright is linked to the fear of God and the avoidance of evil. In short, Job was a man of integrity who trusted in God as his Redeemer, sincerely worshipped the Lord, loved his family, and was consistent in his walk with God. Following a description of Job's riches and children, the text mentions Job's son's feasts. The following is an example of Job's blameless and upright nature. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, Perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom. Job chapter 1 verse 5 Samuel was a man of integrity during his time as the priest of the nation of Israel, and he had this to say. 1 Samuel chapter 12 verses 1 to 7 He stood before the nation of Israel for them to judge his character and conduct in the discharge of his priestly assignments. Samuel's integrity gave him confidence and boldness to speak without fear. He even asked the people to judge him on the basis of his integrity and character. The scripture says, Then Samuel said to all Israel, Behold, I have listened to your voice in everything that you have said to me, and have appointed a king over you. And now, here is the king walking before you. As for me, I am old and gray, and here are my sons with you. 
I have walked before you from my childhood to this day. Here I am. Testify against me before the Lord and Saul his anointed. If I have done someone wrong, whose ox have I taken? Or whose donkey have I taken? Or whom have I exploited? Whom have I oppressed? Or from whose hand have I taken a bribe to blind my eyes to the truth? Tell me, and I will restore it to you. They said, You have not exploited us, or oppressed us, or taken anything at all from a man's hand. Samuel said to them, The Lord is a witness against you, and Saul his anointed is a witness this day that you have not found anything in my hand. And they answered, He is a witness. Then Samuel said to the people, It is the Lord who appointed Moses and Aaron, and brought your fathers, your ancestors, up from the land of Egypt. Now then, take your stand, so that I may plead and contend with you before the Lord concerning all the righteous acts of the Lord, which he did for you and for your fathers. The response of the Israelites showed that they had a lot of respect for Samuel based on his integrity. Number 3. Giving your best to every one of your assignments. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29 says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. When we neglect our assignment while giving attention to what is going on in other people's lives, we naturally welcome mediocrity into our space. There is a certain level of diligence and focus that is necessary to make our lives count. John the Baptist comes to mind here. Isaac shows us quite clear the blessing of diligence, hard work, and consistent focus. Isaac was so focused till he got to the point where he became so rich that the Philistines came to negotiate a peace treaty. This was a mark of respect, as his positive results could not be ignored. Genesis chapter 26 says, now there was a famine in the land of Canaan, besides a previous famine that had occurred in the days of Abraham. So Isaac went to Gerar, to Abimelech, king of the Philistines. The Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Stay in the land which I will tell you. Live temporarily as a resident in this land, and I will be with you and will bless and favor you. For I will give all these lands to you and to your descendants, and I will establish and carry out the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of the heavens, and will give to your descendants all these lands, and by your descendants shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because Abraham listened to and obeyed my voice, and consistently kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes and my laws. So Isaac stayed in Gerar. Then Isaac planted seed in that land as a farmer, and reaped in the same year a hundred times as much as he had planted. And the Lord blessed and favored him. And the man Isaac became great and gained more and more, until he became very wealthy and extremely distinguished. He owned flocks and herds, and a great household with a number of servants. And the Philistines envied him. Now all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines stopped up by filling them with dirt. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from here, because you are far too powerful for us. So Isaac left that region, and camped in the valley of Gerar, and settled there. Now Isaac again dug and reopened the wells of water which had been dug in the days of Abraham his father, because the Philistines had filled them up with dirt after the death of Abraham. And he gave the wells the same names that his father had given them. But when Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found there was a well of flowing spring water, the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. So Isaac named the well 
Isak, quarreling, because they quarreled with him. Then his servants dug another well, and they quarreled over that also. So Isaac named it Sitna, enmity. He moved away from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over that one. So he named it Rehoboth, broad places, saying, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be prosperous in the land. Hard work and a life of diligence were what God used to lift Isaac from the envy of those who were persecuting him earlier on. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I am grateful for the wisdom and integrity that you have chosen to make me partake of. Thank you for your word in the Bible that strengthens me to give my best mentally, spiritually, and physically to every work I have to do. In the name of Jesus, I choose the biblical way to peace, confidence, and dignity. So help me God. Amen.